Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? All right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? Not doing too bad. Kyle, I'm going to get right to this. I'm going to I'm going to stake this claim now. Ohio State, based off of, and we, we kind of had a feeling this was coming. But it's one thing to have a feeling that it's coming. It's another thing to see it. Based off of the week that Ohio State has had, I think we're really gearing up for something special in 2024. If you if you go back and you listen to some of our episodes from 2023, I said on multiple occasions that Ohio State needs to do something this year because they're going to suck in 2024. Ohio State's going to suck in 2024. I kept saying it. Now I said that with the assumption that a lot of guys were going to be leaving. Uh, And a lot of those guys now are officially back. Ohio State has not... the, the, The 2021 recruiting class that has served Ohio State so very well, except against Michigan, but that's not their fault. It has served Ohio State so very, very well has almost entirely come back. I've lost my call. And we lost Marvin Harrison Jr. And both of those losses suck. But Ohio State it has... To be expected. F- it, you say it to be expected, but... You'd have said the same thing if Denzel Burke went pro. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, I agree. I, I would have said that's expected that he, he that he would left, but that's not what happened said, here. <laughs> you'd have said that if Jack Sawyer or Jordan Hancock or JT Tui Moalau went pro. Or Travion JT, Henderson. Yeah. Or Mecca yeah, Buka. Henderson, yeah. But But all of these players are Jay. returning, Kyle, as well as Donovan Jackson and Ty Hamilton. Ohio State has never had a team this talented and this old at the same time. It has been, I don't want to say never, but in, in modern, in the modern age of college football. Since, um, Oh, two. That I love that team. That team's not that talented. That 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 team had but it was very, very um seniored. Experienced. Right. And Ohio State has had incredibly talented teams, like in 2014. They've had incredibly experienced teams, like in 2002. But when was the last time they had a team that was both? Yeah. I and now and now Jared, now with I think it's just crazy just looking at it with all the players who who are moving on, who have uh, declared or have uh, transferred out. Ohio State returning nine of their starting 11 on the defensive side. That has performed so well right. last year. One, one of the best defenses, and you're returning nine of those 11. And by the and by the way, Jared. Oh, let's not even those, talk those, about those, who they might add to it. We'll get to that later. If that's where you were going, yeah, th- those returning nine, not all nine, may not start. <laughs> I mean, we'll talk about that. But so, I mean, like you say, all right, so you're losing. Is it is it nine? I mean, yeah. I guess are we co- are we counting Cody Simon as a one of the starters? Because to my knowledge, you're losing Proctor, you're losing Tommy Eichenberg, and you're Eichenberg. losing Steel Chambers. Mm-hmm. So I guess maybe you're counting Cody yeah, Simon Chambers. or Chambers, like Chambers and Eichenberg. There's your ten eleven right there. Oh, but but then my call. Oh yeah, my call. Yeah. Well, so I, I, yeah, don't, I, I guess eight, eight, nine, eight, nine. Well, I guess it just depends, depends depending on because dep- sometimes Cody Simon yeah. started and sometimes yeah. you Ty Hamilton started instead of Mike Hall. So I guess it just sort of depends upon how you calculate yeah, it. But eight and a half. Let's, let's just say eight and a half. OK, we'll call <laughs> it eight and a half. Um, yeah. And like these are just the guys who were decided they were coming back this week. 
You know what I mean? Like Ty Hamilton, Denzel Burke, Donovan Jackson, JT, Hancock, Henderson, Abuka. It doesn't include Jack Sawyer. Doesn't include some of the other guys who already decided that they were coming back. Ohio State is gearing up for something incredibly special in 2024. And it's hard to say they're going to win the national champion. It's a very difficult sentence to say because you were, we're now facing an era in which winning the Big Ten with USC, Oregon and Washington joining, winning the Big Ten is going to be tough. And now in order to win the national championship game, you now have 12 teams in that playoff. So it's not just about winning two games. Depending upon how you seed it, could be three or four games. Yeah. So it's very difficult in the year 2024 to say a team is super likely to win a national title. Uh, that's that's a very difficult thing to say. But this is an incredibly special group of players that Ohio State is putting together. And then you take all of that and you add some transfer players. Quinshawn Judkins, who, according to on three, is the number one portal running back of the entire portal season so far. Although they have him graded as a 96.19, which is a number that would be difficult to beat. Which, by the way, places him, as we record this, more players will be entering the portal. So that could change. But as we record this, the number three overall player in the portal coming to Ohio State. This, of course, is just who joined this week. There are more. Ohio State has hopefully plugged a quarterback need. Has added a blocking tight end. Has added an offensive lineman. Although an interior offensive lineman, I'm still looking for that tackle. I really want to need Ohio State to pick up a tackle in the portal, but we can maybe talk about that a little bit later in the show. We all do. Yes, well, the, the, ob the, the need is obvious. Ohio State needs. At least uh, Ohio State needs another offensive tackle, and if there's another guard out there, I'll take another guard too, or center or whatever, like I'll, I'll whoever you got on the offensive line, I'll take them. We'll figure out the scholarship numbers later, <laughs> which I think Ohio yeah. State, um, by the way, <laughs> I almost even forgot to bring this up since we're talking about the portal. Bryson Rogers has decided to take his name out of the portal and will be returning yes. to Ohio State, adding to it an already incredible wide receiver room. Which I believe put Ohio State at 85, not that it matters or so many guys are still going to transfer after spring camp. I'm not worried about the scholarship numbers whatsoever. Uh, there's a lot of you, you want to know what it is right now, Jared? The scholarship number? Mm hmm. 85. We have Kyle in the discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. We now have a uh, a scholarship chart of sorts. Um, there's a channel in the Discord server that tells you who all the scholarship players are at each position, gives you a total, uh, tells you how much eligibility they have left, all that stuff um, in discord.thesloopcast.com. And it's all free. It's all free. That's a free channel. No, not the entire Discord server is not free. There are some premium channels on Discord server, but the informational stuff like the departure tracker, like the uh, three separate mock drafts, Although I guess the signed the 2024 class is now no longer a mock. It's just a list of the signed players. Um, all that stuff is available for free in the Discord server. <coughs> Kyle, we're gearing up for a special year at Ohio State. And I don't think we're done adding players. In fact, I feel really good that we're not done adding players yet. Mm -hmm. Like the one concern I have at this point is, is that 
there's not going to be a lot of experience behind these guys. We're, we're, I think we're shaping up for a really bad 2025 at this point, but that's okay. Cause let's just get the, get the championship. I think like, let's sell out for 2024 and get the championship. That's, that's my attitude right now. 2025 can go to hell. Let's put all of our eggs in this basket. Uh, you can say that if you want to Zach, but like injuries happen and transfers happen. Um, yep. a you crew tal- it's rule nine. It's a, we have a, we have a, a list of sloop casts. We saw, we call them rules. They're more like, uh, words or conventions, I guess. But rule nine is acquire talent and worry about everything else later. And I've never felt rule nine more than I have felt rule nine this week. A crew talent. Worry about the details later. So, so Ohio State will have twenty-seven seniors and redshirt seniors and COVID seniors going into the twenty-four season. Are you, what are you just saying? Like four years experience plus? <laughs> yes, that's it. Four, okay. four years and above. Twenty-seven. We also track that in scholarship tracker. Um, yeah. And again, I don't, I don't think we're done adding talent yet. Um, speaking of adding talent, Kyle, the 2024 class, I think is about to get better. Um, you don't have to hear it from us. If you're watching a college football pad- podcast, you already know there's been some coaching movement. We've lost legends in the coaching world this week. Two of them in the NFL, Pete Carroll and Bill Belichick. But this is a college football pod- podcast, so we're going to focus on Nick Saban. Nick Saban, greatest college football coach who ever lived. Period. Done. We can talk about we can talk about some other amazing names, but to have done it in the modern era with scholarship limits and everything else, um, Saban's the best who's ever done it. And from an Ohio State fan perspective, thank God he's finally gone. And I say that with all of the respect in the world. I, if you're an Alabama fan somehow listening, watching this right now, know that there is no better compliment I can offer to Nick Saban than thank God he's gone. And when I say gone, I mean retired. I hope he lives a long, happy retirement life. He's out of college football. And I am so happy. I am so relieved. And that's not hate. That is love. And that is jealousy. That is what that is. So we will tell you that jealousy isn't love. Well, in this case, it is. But with Nick Saban exiting college football, Alabama has turned around and hired uh, the the Boers from Washington Um, this, this, this opens up opportunities elsewhere. If you don't already know, um, this basically the, the head coach departing does open up a 30 day transfer portal window for the players on those teams. And now that, uh, and I I didn't write it, it just happened before we started recording. So I, I didn't take notes on, didn't take good notes on this, but Washington has hired the Arizona head coach. So now all of Arizona's players are uh, available to enter the portal. Uh, we'll look out for their quarterback. Oh boy. He's going to go somewhere and they're going to get better. And I don't think he's a guy who's going to come to Ohio state per se, but God help us. If he goes to Alabama anyway, what we're looking at right now, you might go to Washington. That'd be bad for us too, because they're in the Big Ten now. Everything got a lot harder this year, guys. I've never felt more optimistic about an Ohio State team than I do about the 2024 team. And yet I'm also convinced that there's zero chance on hell we go undefeated, because I think that's just the world we're going to live in in modern college football. I don't think going undefeated is going to be a super realistic option moving forward. No. Um, and and here. <laughs> And here, here's the question, Jared. 
we, we always are one of our rules is that you only get one mario man now that we moved to a 12 no. team yeah that, that, you have that. two mario mans now if if you, we, we need precedent we need precedent to officially change that but it's not it's yeah. not one anymore <clears throat> It's not, you don't need one extra life anymore. It's at least two. It's at least two. Um, you, we'll you, get, what you get, yeah, you get one, but maybe two, two, you're, you're pushing it. Pro two, I mean, you can probably. still get in, but yeah, yeah. What, 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 that, that's, okay. that's another, that's another silly season up, uh, topic. Ah, that might be a straight up wasteland episode. Um, well, true. So, the coaching changes has, has shuffled some things. We'll get the portal stuff. But before we get the portal stuff, let's talk about recruiting stuff. Talking about the 2024 recruiting class. That's how I started talking about this. Then I got off on some tangents, but I was talking about the 2024 recruiting class. Ohio State was already centering in on a defensive tackle from Ohio, but he had been long committed to Washington named Dominic Kirks. Defensive lineman, incredibly talented, Ohio kid. Ohio State slept on him. It's what they've done with a lot of Ohio kids in recent years where they thought they could swoop in late and get him. And they're going to get away with it this time. Uh, but they they need to stop trying to get away with it, which is a thing we talked about on mm -hmm. last week's episode where we mocked out the 2025 recruiting class. Go listen to that. Always be plugging. But Always Dominic be. Kirks. Yes, Dominic Kirks. Um, I think even before the coaching change, Ohio State was uh, in very good position to to cause a flip. Uh, even before the Boers went to Alabama, Ohio State was in very good. And then the Boers, the Boers flips to Alabama and Dominic Kirk's not long after officially decommits. And that's all the signal you need. He he will be rejoining the Ohio State recruiting class. I'm convinced of this. You can go ahead and I very rarely will say this, but go ahead and just just write that down in the darkest, most permanent ink you have. Um, the board is going to come to Ohio State lock. Exactly, Kyle. Total lock. Um, and. You could say that would be the end of the Ohio State 2024 recruiting class. However, two names I want to throw out there two two guys who uh, signed their letters of intent to go to Alabama. Uh, but we've seen letters of intent. We've seen players released from letters and letters of intent after coaching changes in the past. So two names that went to Alabama this season, who I think. Ohio State had. Has a chance at should they decide to uh, attempt to get released from their letters? Two guys Ohio State was very close at, very close on, very close with. Put your prepositional phrase of choice here. Um, Peyton Woodyard, safety out of Georgia. Zabin Brown, cornerback out of Alabama. Or excuse me, he went to Alabama. He's from um, Martyr Day in in California. Um, and that that's just me tossing names out there. I don't know anything. I'm not I'm not going to put a lock on them the way I put it on Dominic Kirks. As far as I'm they're 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 still committed to Alabama. That that le that letter of intent is still signed. Um, but with the entire coaching staff, including the defensive backs coach, and most importantly, in, in their case. Not returning to Alabama. Head coach not returning position coach not returning. We, you know, it's, it's not, it's just something to keep an eye on. I don't know anything. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it's just two players. Ohio state uh, had uh, really good relationships with who almost came to Ohio state, uh, whose situations at the school they did choose changed drastically out from underneath them. Guys, keep an eye on. Judkins, we already talked about Judkins. Um, it's just an enormous pickup for Ohio State. I, I can't. Ohio State has the best running back duo in college football next year. And if anyone wants to question me on that, we'll fight. We will fight. Come to Columbus, we'll arrange something 
If you want to tell me your team has a better running back duo than Judkins and Henderson, we will fight. That there's there's no clever end to that sentence. I will fight you. Um. So yeah, coaching changes, changing things up a bit. Again, these players free to enter the portal now. We've already had some names enter the portal from these schools who Ohio State could be interested in. Kyle, you have those names? Let me pull it up here. I think one name that I really like here, Jared. Find it here. Uh, just recent, just recently here. It was was it yesterday? Was it today? Um, it's in the show. Yeah, notes, yesterday, Scott. Saturday. Uh, Sean Murphy. Yeah, Sean Murphy, the inside linebacker for Alabama, hitting the transfer portal. Um, I really like him. Um, I I think I think Ohio State may have a decent shot at trying to get him. Uh, there's another guy, um, Washington guy, a really big uh, guard, Nate Kleppo. Um, part of part of that starting um, offensive line for Washington there that won the Joe Moore Award for anyone who doesn't know it's the best offensive line in the country award. That's correct. Yeah, um, Washington safety Aza Turner, uh, corner Jabbar Muhammad are in the portal as well as Alabama safety uh, Jake Hope, which I thought I saw his name. Oh no, that was that was. Um, that was Isaiah Bond, uh, the wide receiver for yes. Alabama, is going to Texas. Yeah, yeah. Never Bond mind. wasted yeah. no time. He was in the portal, yeah. out of the portal. Um, yeah, uh, I I know there's a safety name out there that a lot of people are way more excited about. So you hear me talk about, or hear Kyle talk about Jake Pope or Aza Turner, and you're like, okay, okay, but what about, but what about? Well, Caleb Downs isn't in the portal yet. At the time of recording this, Caleb Downs is not yet in the portal. No. Uh, he is, however, on a list of names that I that I have here who I think Ohio State could do a bit of... We, 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 we won't use the word tampering. Tampering is illegal. Tampering is cheating. We don't tamper here. Wink. Wink. <laughs> we Wink. don't tamper. We definitely didn't ever tamper for Simmons or Judkins or anyone else. Due diligence. It's 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 like getting on a tour network. You just need to make sure you have like seven different connections that eventually get there. So it's impossible to trace back. That's a nerd reference for everybody. Um, Caleb Downs, not yet in the portal. However, there does appear to be a lot of smoke tied to the fire that is Caleb Downs coming to Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of co-following on Instagram. There's a lot of chit, a lot of chatter. Same could be said about Sean Murphy, the linebacker Kyle brought up, although Sean Murphy is actually in the portal. So we're not tampering anymore at that point. And I'm not saying we are tampering for Caleb Downs. No, I would never. We're just talking. We're just talking about it. We're just talking. Well, Kyle, really Kyle talking. and I, we're just we we're not capable of tampering. We're we're not affiliated with the university in any way. I, uh, no, no tampering is taking place that I'm aware no. of. Um, Would never suggest such a thing. However, there does appear to be some real smoke as far as. Ohio State and and Caleb Downs. How could that smoke be real if he's not in the portal yet? We don't ask those questions here. Nope. We don't ask those questions here. And I've already said in this episode, I am selling out for 2024. And if that means getting a slap on the wrist and some scholarship losses in 2025, then by God, so be it. We are selling out for 2024. We're getting the championship this year. Now, I'm not saying tamper. I'm not saying we are tampering. I'm not saying we should tamper. But if you were to tamper, 
Theoretically. I didn't do it, but if I did, here's how. OJ Simpson reference for everybody. Caleb Downs. Caleb Downs, with all due respect to, to Josh Proctor. Kyle already mentioned that Ohio State is losing eight or nine starters, depending upon how you count it, off of this defense. Um, replacing Josh Proctor with Caleb Downs. And I love Josh Proctor. I adore Josh Proctor. Uh, that's an upgrade. That's an upgrade. We call that an upgrade. Um, mm -hmm. Caleb Downs would be amazing. I uh, would elevate this defense into the stratosphere, beyond the stratosphere. We're in space. This defense is in orbit. <laughs> what? What? What is that? This defense is in <laughs> orbit. I'm just going to do this, that, that, and um, just throw some. I, I don't want to see whatever is happening in that GIF. Um, this defense is in orbit with Caleb Downs, and I just I, I pray that it happens. I absolutely pray that it happens. That being said, we still need a tackle. <laughs> God, I I yeah. want Caleb Downs a lot, but for God's sakes, we need to get a tackle on this team. We need a tackle on this football team. We need a left tackle to take over day one on this football team. So that we can have Montgomery and Simmons fight it out for the right tackle position on the other side. And then we'll figure and then we'll just accrue talent on the interior until we figure that out, too. But for God's sakes, we need a left tackle for this football team. I will not see another Ohio State football team fall short because of a bad offensive line. It can't happen. Other names out there, Kyle. Who may or may not, mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they do, uh, there, there's no, they, they do play for Alabama. They currently are on the Alabama roster. Um, well, just actually, let me backtrack real quick. In the portal, Kyrie mentioned Nate, Nate Kalepo. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. This is the Sloop guest. I'm probably not. Uh, is a, he's a COVID guy. Uh, class of 2019 has five years of experience or four years of experience plus a red shirt. Um, he's one of those super seniors, one of those last remaining, or I guess there'll be uh, one additional season of super seniors after this one. One of the last, you know, one of the two last classes of super seniors um, affected by the 2020 season. Um. In five years with the Huskies, he made 40 appearances and 18 starts. Again, though, he's an interior guy. He was he has the body type of a tackle. He was recruited as a tackle, uh, but all of his starts for Washington are at guard. So at this point, we do have to consider him a guard. Mm -hmm. Now, Kyle, if there's a position I mean, listen, Ohio State and Alabama recruit against each other a lot. There is a lot of recruiting competition between Ohio State and Alabama. And I said this in the Discord server this week. Discord.thesloopcast.com, always be plugging. I said this in the Discord server this week. Going through the Alabama roster feels a lot like going through a graveyard of missed recruiting opportunities. Always has, always will. <laughs> yeah, seeing see a lot of seeing a lot of names in here. It's like, yeah, I remember talking about him extensively. Oh, and him too, and oh, that guy and too. By the, and, and just just so we're clear, it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of a lot of players Alabama wanted on the Ohio State roster too. However, uh, the offensive line feels very one sided feel like we've lost many a great offensive lineman to Alabama through the years. Currently on the roster for Alabama are some names 
If you follow recruiting, you know. Caden Proctor, who was, I depending upon, I, the best offensive tackle in the country in the 2023 recruiting class. A lot of people will say, oh no, Caden Proctor. That's because we need to recruit the South. Well, no, that would be, that's the opposite of the, why, why, why would us losing players to Bama mean we need to recruit the South more? That's the opposite of anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, Caden Proctor's from Iowa. Um, best offensive tackle in the 2023 class. A lot of people will say a lot of bad things about Caden Proctor because he didn't have a great season. He was a true freshman playing offensive tackle. Do you realize how impossible that is? Yep. Very, very few have done it well. Do you realize how impossible it is to play offensive tackle as a true freshman? Yep. Caden Proctor, Elias Ailman, who's a European player, um, who Ohio State was very in, in, uh, involved in the recruiting of, Tyler Booker, J.C. Latham, You'd be renting Latham for one year, but I, I uh, we're selling out for 2024, I would. guys. I would. I we're would. selling out for 2024. Eliza Pritchett, all of these names, if you follow Ohio State recruiting, you know all of those names. And if you go back and listen to our Monday episode, I made the case for going and getting Alabama's old offensive line or offensive line coach, Eric Wolford. If for no other reason than to maybe try and get one or two of these guys to 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 transfer over to Ohio State. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. And does Eric Just Wolford work out long term? Just give me I one. don't care. We're selling out for 2024. You go get Eric Wolford to be the new offensive line coach at Ohio State in order to get one or two of these offensive linemen to transfer to Ohio state so that we have a beast of an offensive line and we win the national championship in 2024. And we worry about everything else later. Did Fry get fired? No. Um, That's, that's not the case I'm making. Just give me one tackle. That's all I'm asking for. Give me one. Really just need a tackle. Um, what what's ha- you can listen to the Monday episode for the full rundown of it, Florida. Um, but the new offensive coordinator will be given full authority to do whatever he wants with the offensive coaching staff. So unless your name is Brian Hartline, you're not safe on the offensive staff at Ohio State right now. Everyone's jobs are potentially up in the air. Unless you're Brian Hartline. Some other familiar names on that Alabama roster who we definitely shouldn't wink, be tampering wink and talking to wink about potentially entering the portal Uh, running back. Justice Haynes was a guy that Ohio state was in on until the very end. Um, Ohio state needs some running back depth. Um, we're, We're very good at the top three running backs, but with, I, I don't know. With Judkins coming in, how that affects everyone below Judkins, and whether they'll still be on the the roster come the end of spring once the new portal window opens up. So you might be looking for some additional depth in the offensive line room. Um, Justice Haynes, I, I think, is a guy who I would absolutely bring onto the onto the roster. Kyle, linebacker Dallas Turner. Does that name sound familiar? From all those it recruiting does. episodes. Yep. Keon Keeley was a guy Ohio State was recruiting and is a monster of an edge rusher. Ty Lockwood at tight end. I don't know if we need a tight end right now, but screw it. <laughs> kind of how I no, felt I about including uh, Washington cornerback uh, Jabbar Muhammad uh, in, you know, Kyle read those names earlier. Kyle said doesn't really need a cornerback right now, but Muhammad's so good that I don't really care. <laughs> Just some names to keep an eye on. If we're looking to have a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy send a DM on Instagram just to see maybe uh, if they'd be interested in playing in Columbus. 
Maybe. Maybe. You have a player reach out to a player who reaches out to an old high school girlfriend to send a DM saying, hey, yup. For playing in Columbus. That's all I'm saying. Ask or have someone three. Three people removed from you ask. As an intermediary. Because we definitely don't want to be caught tampering. <laughs> Maybe just tamper a little bit. We're selling out for 2024, everybody. We'll deal with the punishments later. We're selling out for 2024. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Kyle, any other names? Any other names, Jared? Uh, I, I could I could go through the entire Alabama roster and pick out some great players. Uh, there's a I. Again, Washington just won the Joe Moore. There's a lot of offensive linemen out there that I would be not wink calling wink to see if they'd be interested in playing at a certain uh, C initialed city in Columbus that isn't Cincinnati or Cleveland or Canton. Um, you forgot in Canton. <laughs> I, you never forget Canton. It's, 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 guys, it's the four C's in Ohio. Never forget Canton. Um, rule nine needs applied to Washington. Everyone should everyone should live by rule nine. So I don't know. You you, you need to get an off another offensive tackle on this team. Of course. Absolutely. Of course. Go get Caleb Downs. Ohio State was talking about needing some linebacker depth anyway. Yeah, go talk to Sean Murphy or Dallas Turner. Bring those bring those guys in. If Caleb Downs isn't interested, or maybe even if he is interested, give Aza Turner a call because I wouldn't mind having both of them, quite frankly. Is that realistic? Probably not. Would I still make the call? Yes, I would. And you can actually just you can just call Aza Turner. He's in the portal. Mm -hmm. There's no no winking necessary. No ex-girlfriends necessary. No college or high school football coaches necessary there. You can just call Lisa Turner. But Kyle, Ohio State's building something special. And in addition to that, Ohio State's bringing in a lot of players, a whole lot of players to play some spring ball for Ohio State. We have that Lots. list officially now. Who do we got on the list coming? And uh, we got a tackle, Jared. We got a tackle. The technical term being green shirting. Well, I don't know how many people know that, but uh, spring and rolling. We got a tackle. We got I love, a tackle coming I in. I love the Armstrong twins. <laughs> I was I was talking about the Armstrong twins years before anyone else in Ohio State blogosphere podcastosphere was talking about the Armstrong twins, but they're get, not going to be ready in year one. Get to know your future Buckeye names, Aaron Nolan. James Peoples, Sam Williams, Dixon, Jeremiah Smith, Ian you Moore. Get to know Jeremiah Smith. Yeah. Ian Moore, Deontay Armstrong, Devontae Armstrong, Edric Houston, Eric Bensa, Peyton Pierce, Garrett Stover, Aaron Scott, Bryce West, Miles Lockhart, and Jalen McClain. Very happy uh, to be getting both of the running backs in, in the spring. And the corners. I'm 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 happy with the corners too. I feel like we're plenty deep at corner. I mean, we, we probably we needed some depth at corner, so uh, uh, okay. Um but we really needed some depth at running back again, especially if we if we lose anyone else to the portal. Um and more and you already lost several running backs to the portal. Um so getting both of the freshman running backs in. I think is incredibly important and incredibly key. Um, I don't, I, I love Ian Moore. I love the Armstrong twins. I don't think they're going to be immediate contributors. Um, Edric Houston could be, uh, although with both Sawyer and Sawyer, with both Sawyer and JT returning, maybe not. Um, but yeah, depth in the defensive back room for sure needed. 
So also happy to be getting all those guys in. All right, Kyle, uh, is that it for this episode? Do you have anything else you yeah, want to talk that about? Is, yeah, that is it. I think that is. I think that's it for for today. A lot of name, lot of names, and I think I think this will get the. I think this will get. Hopefully, some people hyped up for this upcoming season. Man, we got. It's good to get Aaron Nolan in too, because. I just I don't know. I don't know what to expect out of the quarterback. I'm I'm very happy. As far as I think we won out. If we're talking about a trade in quarterbacks, I I think we did well. I think we upgraded our quarterbacks. Um, but I really want to have the young guys as ready as possible. So having Aaron Nolan coming in the spring is also very valuable. Just in case yes. of injury, just in case Devin Brown decides he wants to leave after the spring. Um, I think it is incredibly helpful to have both uh, Keen Holtz and Nolan in camp because they could be fighting for for spot number two on the roster. Mm -hmm. It's entire it's entirely possible. All right, Kyle, uh, that's it for today's show. I think I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Um, Come join the Discord server. I think I already plugged the Discord server a couple times this show. Um, if you enjoy what we do here, join us at Patreon, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Um, if you don't like those annoying ads, which Kyle, we keep for, we did it for one episode. We kept up on that. We for did it for one long. episode where we were kicking to the brakes for on Spreaker. We need to, we need to get better at that. Um, okay. Probably should just like keep it in the no anyway. Um, point is, uh, if you listen to the podcast version of the show, it has all those annoying inserts of ads that pop in. If you join us on Patreon, you won't get those annoying inserted ads. Not at the beginning of the show, the end of the show, in the middle of the show. Those those ads don't exist. You get your own ad free RSS podcast feed. Uh, that you can add to your phone or listen straight through the Patreon app if you want to. Um, and you don't get those annoying inserted Spreaker ads. Kyle, I got an email from our uh, person over at Spreaker, by the way. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they're, they're, they're like, hey, um, we noticed you don't have political ads turned on. You know, you can make a lot more money if you turn political ads on, right? And I didn't respond. I really don't want to turn political ads on. That's, that's all. I don't. It's, I don't want to turn political ads on. I think. But I think I, that's. But I also not, need some computer. But I also need some sloop cat. Not our. Not our sloopcast rules, but the rules in our Discord server. Discord rule number no two and four. No politics. Because <laughs> here, here's the yes. thing. If I if I turn if I turn those on. If I turn on the political ads, there will be people who assume that I choose or have the ability to not choose whose ads get on the podcast and therefore might insinuate, insinuate's not the right word there, infer that I am supporting that candidate or cause when those ads are totally handled by Spreaker. Um, so that's why I don't want those on and I make, we make less money as a result. Cause mm -hmm. I, cause we don't have those on. Um, yeah. If you want to thank us for not having political ads on the Sloopcast podcast feed, maybe throw us uh, $3 a month over at patreon.thesloopcast.com. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you know, we also switched T-shirt vendors a few years back because the previous T-shirt vendor uh, gave out crap product. So we decided to go with a different T-shirt vendor. Uh, Merch.thesloopcast.com, by the way. Went with a cheaper T-shirt vendor. Or excuse me, not a cheaper one. 
we went with a better t-shirt vendor where we make less money per item. All for you. We do this for you guys. We got less of a cut. But the t-shirts hold up better, so we so we do it. And we put hours into these episodes. Just saying, if you've been listening for a while, maybe maybe throw us three dollars a month over at Patreon. And if you don't want a monthly recurring thing, you can just pay for the entire year up front. It's thirty two bucks. I need I need some more RAM for this computer. It's starting to struggle when I'm doing video edit. I, I need some RAM for this computer, guys. Come on, help, 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 help me out. Help me out. <laughs> um that's it that's the end of the show that's enough guilt i did enough guilting kyle um everything kyle's corner did i already ask you that you have not and i was okay. looking through and i should have said this should have said what i said in monday's episode for this one here but um as we're recording this on sunday monday is the ohio state michigan basketball game you threw you said so many days of the week just now i did <laughs> he did i should have said no about the Ohio State to basketball don't. game before yeah in the last episode yeah i mean the thing is that, that game's what at noon most how many people are actually going to listen to this before noon or even the monday episode rather before noon yeah on a holiday mm. monday anyway it probably wouldn't have mattered i guess is my point yep true but no, not, nothing, no, nothing, nothing new here. Um, yeah, no, we'll, we'll just end it. We'll All just right. end it, Jared. Everyone, we're, we're Caleb Downs and an offensive tackle away from dominating college football next year. I honestly believe it. But we need an offensive tackle. I, I just need everyone. I, I, if you're, I don't know if, if you're a praying type, if you're an ask the universe type, if you are a uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for manifesting type, do what you got to do. But just we need Latham or Proctor or someone to, to transfer to, from Bama to Ohio State. Maybe someone from Washington. I'm just saying we need we we need a tackle. We're tack we are an offensive tackle. We are a dominant offensive tackle away from dominating college football next year. Mark my word. With that being said, nope, I almost forgot to introduce the band. Uh, tonight's ending music, just like on Monday, a uh, Columbus-based band called Of Two Minds. Uh, they are playing a concert at Ace of Cups in Old North Columbus. I think that's what it's called, Kyle. Um, North Campus, Old North Columbus, something like that. Uh, you know where Ace of Cups is, and if you don't, you can Google it. Um, they're playing uh, a show at Ace of Cups January 26th, uh, and I'm linking to that show uh, in the show notes. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, virtual local podcasters. Once again, this is Of Two Minds. <laughs>